So we just want to finish drawing this two-dimensional layout, these walls to create the perimeter. And then once we've got the perimeter created, then that's going to be the end of what we're doing for the 3D part of today. And then we're going to work in 2D now. Mm. In a way, we're, we're currently working in 2D because we're drawing polylines and lines, but we're creating the basis. We're creating the, uh, the outline, and then from that outline, we can then build our 3D model into that. Of course, we'll be using the slab and the walls and the roof tool and, and so on. And we're drawing this up on the upper ground floor, so this is where we do draw the 3D elements. So we need to make sure that all of this is working. Now the really smart way about doing this is once this is created, we can magic wand. We can auto create things like slabs by magic wanding this shape or magic wanding this shape to create walls. What we want to do is make sure that we don't have any additional lines that are going to make anything like that hard. So what I will do is use again some hot spots on the boundaries so we can then remove these lines without them getting in the way. We might lose a dimension or two in the process, but we can always add that back in. When we add dimensions, when we're dimensioning, if we're not dimensioning straight, we should be using, using this one here, which is the angled dimension. And this allows me to identify points, in this case hotspots, and reference those. So if I hover and I get the hotspot, it turns blue. If I hover and I get a line instead of the hotspot, what I could do is press tab, tab, until I get the hotspot. Now that's the thing that's being referenced when I draw my dimension. Now the only other thing that's important to understand with dimensioning is this angled dimension allows us to make it straight or angled or parallel or perpendicular to what we're trying to uh, dimension. So it's important that we make sure we're in the right orientation. In this case, I don't want it to be straight. I want it to be perpendicular to my, or parallel, to the points that I measured. So we'll line that up, make sure it's on the angle, then click. Even if it means I'm too far away, I can always then move it back into alignment, into place. But it's just important that I first determine which orientation that I place it. Because once I've placed the orientation, I can't really adjust that orientation. It's then easier just to uh, delete that dimension and start again. So we've got all of the bits of dimensions that we need. We've got all of the lines, and we know that all of these internal corners are 90 degrees. Uh, so nothing is on a strange angle at the moment except for the relationship to the boundary. Now when we represent the floor below this, that's when we start getting some strange dimensions, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So I just want to help you get up to this point, which just means continuing to use uh, these lines based on the dimensions that I've provided you. I'll change the color of these to black. Hopefully that'll make that easier to read. And then another thing I'd like to talk about soon is how to change our pen colors in our pen sets because when we get into 2D detailing we actually want to use colors or I would suggest it would be great to be able to use colors to be able to represent the materiality of the two-dimensional detailing. So we don't want to just use the basic pen set that we currently have. So if you can just copy what we've got here, finish this off, just make it look like this. I'll help you get to this point, and then we'll move on. I'll show everyone how to do the dimensioning. So to do the dimensioning, I'll just go up a story or I'll um, delete the dimensions and redo it. We've got two different ways of dimensioning. I'll just do these main ones first. So when we're dimensioning, if we're dimensioning something straight, we shouldn't use this method. This method's bad if it's straight. It's just too complicated. We should use this method. So there's one that's sort of up and down and there's one that's angled. We want the one that's up and down. So there's one that's called XY only, and the other one's called any direction. So we want to use the XY only 
not the any direction one, if we're doing something that's straight. So when we have it, just watch, just watch, just watch. So we're in the dimension tool, we choose the x, y only, then I want you to, if we know that we can do multiple dimensions at one time, what we're talking about is a dimension string. We want to click on all of the points before we draw the dimension line. So I'm deciding I want to click on this point. Now watch, I'm moving until it turns to a tick. If it doesn't turn to a tick, I'm not on an end point and that creates other problems. So it needs to be a tick and then it, when I draw it, it needs to be a circle. If you click on a dimension and it's a square, what you're creating is what's, what's called a static dimension, which means you've probably not clicked on an endpoint, you've probably picked on just a line, and if it's a static dimension, it can't update. The advantage of clicking on an endpoint is it means it can update. So you need to make sure that they stay as circles, not squares. Now once I've got all three in this case, because there's three points, one, two, three, to define for me a horizontal dimension string. Once I've got those three points, I'm then going to double click to say I'm finished. Once I've double clicked, I can then choose which orientation. So we see here I could put this into any four directions. Of course, it doesn't make sense in two directions. It's not giving me the right information. So I either need to go up or down. Now the general rule with dimensioning is I want to keep that dimension as close as possible to the side in which I'm dimensioning it. Now once we get further and we draw walls, I will explain this in more detail, and the reality is you don't need to draw dimensions at the moment, I just have the dimensions to be able to show you what to do. But I will show you it now just to explain it. So once we know which direction we want to go, then we just need to click to place it. Now if you're worried you want to get closer, don't try to do that because you might accidentally place it in the wrong direction. So instead just go further away and then click it even if it's all the way out here because you can always drag the dimension and look I don't even need to hold shift even if I'm dragging on an angle it will still keep the dimension straight because the dimension is locked in. Let's do that again. So we've got this dimension. Let's do it again. We're going to do it in the other direction now. So click, click, click. So I've clicked on the three points. I now want to define the left hand side. I now double click to say I'm finished and then I choose which direction I want to place the dimension. Again the further away I go on the left the less likely I'm to make a mistake. Click and then I can always drag it back in as close as I want to be. So when we've only got two points, that's of course easier, but it's exactly the same process. Click, click, double click, click to place, and then drag to move it into place, perhaps. We'll do one more again. Dimension, click, click. What, what did I do wrong? I wasn't being careful and I accidentally missed and it turned into a square. If I see that square, I know I've clicked in the wrong place. That's a static dimension. If I zoom out, I'd never notice. But if I'm zoomed in enough, I'll see that that's the problem. So the problem is maybe partly to do with zoom. I need to make sure I'm not too far zoomed out. But realistically, I can zoom in a very, very long way and still accidentally click the wrong place and then never know. So it's not necessarily about zooming in or zooming out. It's just about waiting till your cursor does the right thing. In this instance I need to wait till my cursor isn't grayed but black. Once my pencil is black that's when I know I've got it in the right place and I can place my dimension. So that's dimensioning. Now we're just talking about 2D dimensioning. Once we add in walls that's what will commonly be dimensioning and then there's a, an extra little tool which makes dimensioning with walls a little bit more interesting a little bit more simple. So we'll work on that once we've drawn some walls in. Uh, but that's all we want to do for now. We just wanted to draw our building outline, our building envelope, and we can uh, develop that later. We'll stick now to some 2D processing of drawing some 2D details.